Hey, hello, and welcome to Fresno. The sun is just coming up. Fresno, California is where we are. It's been kind of a rainy morning here in Fresno, and we are heading over to the cargo ramp today. Doing a little cargo hop up to uh, San Francisco. Um, there's been an awful lot of people I've noticed over on the uh, t uh, spy flight over on Twitch that have been picking up the uh, de Havilland Twin Otter. This is probably one of the toughest little airplanes that you're gonna find. And we're gonna be flying a uh, FedEx flight. Hi, I'm Dave. I do the spy flight over on uh, Twitch TV. And we fly all sorts of airplanes, including this little guy. And I've gotta tell you, the, uh, the de Havilland Twin Otter really is one of the toughest little airplanes around. Uh, Windward Airlines still flies this thing uh, over to uh, St. Bart's uh, out of St. Martin. They've uh, done some modifications on this. This is a bit of an older version of this. Uh, and I don't think that FedEx is flying these uh, for cargo anymore, but I think some few people are still using these uh, for cargo. And again, it's great for island tops. It's just a tough little airplane. The first time that I ever saw a Twin Otter was for an airline called Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain Airways, and it was flying a commuter service from the old Denver Stapleton uh, down to uh, Colorado Springs. This was a long time ago uh, in a galaxy far, far away. So what are we doing today? Well, we are taking the Aerosoft to Havilland Twin Otter, uh, which is uh, its designation is the DHC-6. It's cargo variant that we're flying today. Add-ons that I'm using for today's flight is SimBrief and Sim Toolkit Pro. Uh, also use some Sky Vector help to, uh, to uh, go and identify VORs along the way. We're using Navigraph charts and data, and all the airports, I think, uh, are default airports. And uh, so the only real payware here is the de Havilland Twin Otter from Aerosoft. Today's flight, we've got some stormy weather here and uh, a little bit of turbulence and chop in the skies between here and San Francisco. This is a strict VOR to VOR flight plan. Now there is a, a Garmin aboard and you can prog program in some waypoints, but this is sort of like all about VOR to VOR. Uh, planning. We are using current weather and current time, which means if you're going to fly along with me, and I, I hope you are, your weather is going to be a little bit different, which means the real world active runways might be a little bit different uh, for you too. And I do suggest that you fly along with me. The great thing about YouTube, you can hit pause on the video, fire up your flight simulator, load yourself up, and uh, kind of match me button for button. It's the whole idea behind these cold and dark videos here is so that you can pause, restart, and rewind the video and make sure that you're uh, pressing all the buttons too. I also suggest a few days after this, do your own hometown flight with this airplane and the notes that you might be taking from all this. And that way you can uh, just remember the things that uh, you're going to hopefully learn about this flight. And then if you feel like it, join us over on Twitch for the spy flights. We fly everything from Airbuses uh, to Boeings to the uh, de Havilland Twin Otter. One thing about this, uh, as far as how it is that I've learned how to do this, so here was an old uh, cover uh, uh, flight manual uh, that came with uh, Twin Otter uh, over on, uh, over on uh, X-Plane. And I never really, you know, it, it took a while for me to learn the airplane. So my checklist <laughs> was something that I kind of just scratched out here. So um, it's really pretty simple and hopefully uh, you're able to get this. But if you uh, feel like it, uh, open up Notepad over on one of your screens and maybe hit pause as, as I'm doing some of these checklist items. And maybe that's going to help you figure out a few things too, because that was all I had as far as a checklist uh, for this thing. So here we are. Welcome to uh, Fresno, California. Uh, the sun is just coming up here in Fresno, and we're doing a commuter run from the cargo ramp in Fresno over to the cargo ramp in San Francisco. Now, normally, I think that the small little commuter uh, prop liners uh, for uh, cargo, for FedEx and UPS, mostly what they're going to do is they're going the opposite direction, but I wanted to take it into San Francisco. I thought that would be kind of nice. But usually, that's what these things do. These things come from the big airport and uh, they're taking the packages out to the smaller airports and the smaller towns uh, for delivery. All right, let's go ahead and hop into the uh, best seat in the house here. There is a little bit of light rain that's falling here in Fresno and that's what you're hearing uh, outside. Now then, a uh, quick look at the flight plan here today. All we are doing is we are going direct to 
uh, we're going direct to San Francisco. So here is uh, the chart that I did over on Sky Vector. So KFAT, Fresno to KSFO, uh, San Francisco. And the only thing that I'm really looking for is going to be the San Francisco VOR. Now we are 137 miles away. After we take off, we'll turn to a heading of 137 degrees and we will look for uh, the San Francisco VOR. The uh, San Francisco VOR, by the way, is, and this is what I really like about uh, Sky Vector, 115.8. That gives us the frequency over there. And it also gives our heading off the runway, which is 282 degrees. So all that looks good. How is our weather today? Well, it doesn't sound all that great. Uh, the METAR for uh, Yosemite International Airport is, I'm just gonna update it here and see, Winds are zero at zero, so very nice today. Uh, we are, uh, let's see, Simbrief said we should take off on runway 29 left for our departure runway. We're going to be overcast by 8,000 feet, so we're going to be scattered at 5,500. Simbrief said that we should plan on 10,000 feet for today's flight, so we're going to be flying in the soup today. So, I, you know. I hope you brought your soup clothes and everything else. All right, what else can we look at? The only other thing that I've gone and done here is I did get a couple of charts here uh, over on Navigraph. So what do we need here? We're gonna need, well, here's our runway and we're gonna be taking off, it said, 28 right. So we're over here. Let's go ahead and use some flight tracking uh, for the map and uh, flight tracking for us should put us right over here in air cargo. So we'll come out here on Taxiway Charlie down to 29 right and off we go. And then uh, coming on in San Francisco, Real World uh, is uh, landing on the 28s. So we'll come in on uh, 28 right. We'll set up the ILS and uh, come in and see if we can't land after landing on 28 right. We go over here and uh, probably exiting pretty quick. We'll try and get across the 19s here and then exit at Echo and Delta and FedEx land is up here uh, on the northeast side of the airport. There is our flight plan. Let's see if we can go and make this happen. And this is a good time again. You should fly along with me. Again, open notepad. And as I'm uh, flipping some buttons, stop and start the video. And uh, you could, then you'll have a checklist a little bit like the thing that I scratched out over there. Okay. So first things first, here we are in the cockpit. Usually one of the things that I'll do is I'll come up here and make sure that my controllers are set. So I've got four levers on my throttles. And uh, so there's throttles. I've also got some levers set up. Uh, one of them set up for the prop controls, which are up here and they're feathered right now. And I also have uh, flap control. So I've got those set up. I'm using the Airbus controllers from uh, Thrustmaster right now, and I've been super happy with those. So, and I'm able to use those and fly just about every airplane. Okay, as far as uh, weight and balance on this airplane, um, it's a little bit limited here. So one of the things you've got is we've got the empty weight, which is 2,685 kgs is our empty weight. Uh, as far as fuel, Simbrief said I needed 619 uh, kgs of fuel. Right now we're at 687. We'll just leave it there, which is about 50% fuel. As far as cargo, it's still a little dodgy here as far as me loading stuff up uh, on all this. But I think that, you know, we are at as far as payload 20%. Why don't we just go with that and uh, we can go and hop down the, um, the cargo rabbit hole another day. If you want, you could add a little bit more cargo to this. I'm going to not mess with it, which is, you know, a good thing to do. We'll, we can jump down the uh, rabbit hole of numbers some other time. Okay, and if you see here, my pointer now has, it's sort of a little cross with arrows here in the middle. Okay, the way to get rid of that is go and just grab one of the toolbars and grab it up here and move it a little bit and then uh, click it and then that's going to return you back to a pointer and uh, you should be able to fix that. So first things first, let's go ahead and we're gonna look down here at the bottom uh, at the floor here between the rudder pedals and you see that little lever, click it and that's your control lock and then go ahead and move your controllers. 
Okay, so the controllers move, rudder pedals move, and that's good. Once all this is gone, I usually go ahead and I just click the uh, base of this, and that gets it out of the way. So it's easier for me to see what see my instruments. Now, there is a set of controls, though, on here, and I don't mess with these that much. If you look over here, we do have trim controls here. And uh, also the yaw damper button is there, too. I kind of just blip past all of that and don't press those buttons. So those are two button presses that I'm gonna be missing on this airplane. Okay, we're ready to start doing the one thing that uh, sim pilots like to do. Let's start flipping buttons here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we have external power or battery. I'm gonna turn on the battery switch and right next to it is the main uh, electrical switch. <gasps> and lights come on. This airplane gets a little noisy every now and then, so be ready for that. We're gonna come up here and let's go and do no smoking, and we're gonna do the position lights. So we're gonna get those two on right now. And you can see we've got a green light over here. Yep, there's a green light over on the right side, a red light on the, red so on the left side, and a white light in the back. So we're all good to go. Now then, there's a couple of dimmers up here that you can go and control. These are uh, engine instrument dimmers. I usually leave them about where they are. There is also, as you can see, a uh, cabin light that you can turn on and off. Sun is coming up. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Let's see what happens when we turn that off. We've still got some lights on the instrument panel right now, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so we got those turned on. The next thing that we'll do is we're all loaded. So we'll just assume that we're fueled and loaded and ready to go. So big check that I look over for over here are my props clicked up here. And you actually have to use the mouse to push those up there and make sure that the props are feathered. Okay, we're going to look down here and a couple of uh, engine gauges that I'm going to look at. First of all, here's our fuel gauges. 8 and 8, 16, I guess we're pretty good as far as, and by the way, this is labeled in pounds, yet the airplane is loaded in kgs, so that's a little bit of a dodgy thing right there. We're also going to turn the transponder to standby, so that's good. Now then, as we start this thing up here, there's a couple of numbers that we're going to look at. First is, there's the one on the bottom, GGRPM. Uh, that is, I believe, gas generation RPM. And no, it's not referring to your trip to Taco Bell. So um, I think that a better way to put it might be the EGT, the, the exhaust gas temperature that we have on jets. So I, I could be wrong about that one, but uh, that's the way I think of these. Next up here is prop RPM. You see the yellow zone, 70, 75 is the beginning of the green zone for the proper prop setting. There's your first really, really tacky joke of the flight. Okay, and finally up here is torque pressure. Okay, so we've got torque pressure up here. I believe this is measured in inches. That's kind of the way I think it. That's another one of those things that I might be wrong at. Settings on torque pressure is 30% and 41% is what we care about on torque pressure. And then we're gonna look down here prop percentage, 75% is cruise, 95% is the top end, about 85% is climb. The other numbers that we're going to look for is 12% on uh, uh, gas generation RPM. That's when we actually turn on the fuel. Okay, so those are our numbers that we need. The next thing we're going to do is turn on the uh, forward and aft boost pumps. Now we're going to come up here. We have a cargo load today. So if you see, we got a big old crate back here. And uh, to make it a little more endearing for spy pilots, if you zoom in really close, it says Dr. No Laboratories. <gasps> so we're carrying a secret spy thing from Dr. No. Makes life just a little bit more cool, doesn't it? Okay, so we don't have seatbelts, but I've noticed that uh, real world cargo pilots, if there's a seatbelt switch in the airplane, they turn it on. So we're gonna do it too. Anti-collision lights are going to go on too. Outside, you can see our beacon is now flashing on the top of the tail. So that lets everybody know that our uh, the airplane with the Assassin's Creed swords on the wings is going to start hacking and slashing. And thanks to B-Mint for the term hacking and slashing. 
Last thing we'll do today is our altimeter. Right now it's 2984. You can do it several different ways. You can set it properly. So there's 2984 or you could just cheat and hit the B button. I know, cheating is never good, but if you're running out of time, just hit the B button and that's gonna be fine. The only other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to preset my heading here. And so let's go over and look at Sky Vector and our Sky Vector heading after takeoff is 282 degrees. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to set 282. So there is three, two, nine, there is 282. And I'm also gonna crank this thing up to 10,000 feet. Three, four, so this is our altitude set. Yeah, we'll use a little autopilot on eight, nine, and 10. Okay, that's it. Are we ready to go? Well, we, we could also go and set the uh, uh, VOR if we wanted to, so we can set the frequency. Maybe I should have done this. So we're gonna go over here and click push CV and our uh, San Francisco is 115.8. So 115.8, make that active. And now we're ready to go. Later on, we're gonna come in here and we will set the ILS, okay? All right, I think we're ready to go. I guess the only other thing that we could do is we could set uh, this, uh, the uh, VOR to our heading to. There's all sorts of preparation on this thing. Now we're ready to start with the Assassin's Creed swords on the, uh, on the front of the airplane. Okay, so it's gonna get kind of loud on this one. And what we'll do is we're gonna look down here and we're gonna start things up and we're gonna go ahead and get to 12 percent on gas generation after we hit the starter and that's when we introduce fuel fuel is the red lever up here ready okay so come on over here and the starter is here let's start the right engine first look down here gas generation eight nine ten eleven twelve fuel and if we want, we can go outside and see the props start to spin. Okay, we got to start on our uh, right engine. Let's go ahead and do the same thing, thing now for the left engine. And again, it's real simple. The starter's over here. So we're going to click the arrow over for the left. We're going to look down here. Gas generation. 10, 11... 12, fuel. And there goes our other prop. And really the start sequence on these is really pretty good on this airplane. And it does get a little bit quieter in the airplane after the start, but it does kind of get a little loud. Okay, next thing we're gonna come up here and take the props out of feather mode. So just click these down, okay? So we're gonna click those down. Now then, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go and move the prop levers. You see the prop RPM is going up but it's still in the yellow zone. We're gonna go ahead and move the props forward. So prop levers are forward and they're gonna go up a little more. And now we're gonna also go and we're going to move the, uh, let's see, what is it? I think we're going to go and move the props up to 60%. The, the throttles, gas generation is 60%. So throttles up to 60% and then we can come up here and we can turn on the generators. I think you've got to have them going a little bit faster to get the generators going. We'll also turn on bleed air. I'm going to turn the temperature to manual. We're also going to turn on pitot tube heaters. And while we're up there, let's also just do the taxi light, okay? And then we're going to roll the throttles all the way back down to idle. Okay, so all of that looks good. Remember, we are over here at the cargo zone. So we're going to come out here, taxiway Charlie. So straight ahead, left turn on Charlie, right turn to runway 29 right. If you've got any kind of a moving map, 
I really do suggest y using this for taxiing. Even if you're at an airport that you're familiar with, especially when you start to fly on VATSIM, it's just gonna make your life a little better. Okay, so make sure you're seated correctly. Sit back in your chair, so make sure your chair isn't gonna tilt back on you. Put your feet on the rudder pedals. Get ready to do the toe brakes. Rudder pedals forward, parking brake is off. Okay, now then, we've got this guy standing over here. You could, you, you could have him do a pushback for you. I'm just gonna go and be a very, very mean person, and we're gonna go and release the brakes, add a little bit of throttle, start moving forward and turn away from the guy on the ground. There we're starting to move, turn, and that should have taken care of making sure, yeah, we didn't hit him. Okay, so we're good to go. Now props back to idle. And we'll come out here and let's find our taxiway. There's our taxiway. There's a yellow line. Always good to find the yellow line. And then we turn. And there's another taxiway and another yellow line. And out we go. Props, uh, flaps I mean, uh, flaps 10 for takeoff. So flaps are going down. Ooh, we're gonna have a nice little sunrise through the rain clouds. All right, everything's good here. Uh, if we were on VATSIM, we should be uh, squawking mode Charlie. So mode Charlie's down here. And we'll just put it in altitude reporting right now because we're gonna be taking off so quickly it's not funny. Everything else is ready to go. We're ready for our heading. After takeoff, runway heading at a slight gentle turn, uh, I believe to the left. Add a little more prop here. You can see up here, my prop levers are here. I've actually got those set on some other levers so that I can adjust the props. After takeoff, we're gonna roll those props down just a little bit. To, if I remember correctly, 85%. Okay, how's everything up here? Everything's good up there. Pito hoot tubes on. Uh, if we were flying in the winter time, there's prop de-icers, intake anti-ice, wing inspection lights, and uh, we have de-icer boots uh, on the wings. So the de-icer boots are what's going to uh, bust up the ice uh, on this airplane, and ice is a thing. Never fun. Got a nice view out there. Not taxiing on my center line very well. Probably because there, well, there isn't a breeze out here, so it isn't the wind blowing around. I guess I'm just being sloppy. Uh, let's see, there are windshield wipers in flight sim. I generally find in windshield wipers to remove a couple of spots off the windshield, but unless I'm on a landing approach or something like that, they're more annoying than help. So, especially the sound. So I generally don't mess with the windshield wipers. Some some folks over in chat, over on, uh, over on uh, Twitch sometimes, why don't you use your windshield wipers? This is terrible. Okay, we just did our quick little hydrate there. Next available left is going to be taxiway Charlie for 29 right, so we're almost ready to go. Okay, we are squawking, everything looks good. I think it's almost flying time. Okay, I do have something, pneumatic low pressure. Pressure will pick up uh, as soon as we get ready for takeoff. Now then, for the takeoff, what we'll do is remember the um, uh, torque pressure. So instead of being torqued off, you're gonna go, I know, another bad joke. So 30 inches is what I call it for stable engines and then 40 to 41% for takeoff. As soon as you get set, look down. Our takeoff speed generally in this thing, you fly at 60 to 65 is what I usually look for. There's our yellow line going over to the runway.
head there. So run away. Are we all ready to go? Okay, so 30% on the throttles. Make sure our engines are stable. Then 41% and look for 65. All right, so last thing, I'm gonna come over here. It's kind of hard to see because this is a dark light over here. Strobe lights. So strobes are going on. That's uh, usually what I do when I enter an active runway. And you can see we've got our strobes flashing. So now we're flashers. Great. You'll notice that I tend to move the throttles quite a bit for an airplane. Now on a jet, I tend to not do them as much. So I use them a little bit more. One of the things about this airplane is keep your speed up. This thing goes into flying brick mode awfully fast. All right, lined up on the runway. Landing lights going on. Landing lights are on. Is it flying time? It is. We're centered up, so throttle's gently going up to, there's 30%, stable. And up to 40, there's 40, 41. Looking good, look down at your airspeed. There's 55, 60, 65, flying time. Gently pull back. Now this airplane does have, does not have retractable landing gear, but generally I've always thought that what you do is tap your brakes. So tap your brakes, that stops the wheels spinning. And we got a nice little climb and we are basically on a runway heading for San Francisco. Oh, we're starting to turn a little bit. Raining cats and dogs. Okay, not doing a very good job of turning back over here. We're climbing at about 2,000 feet per minute. That's not bad. Now we're getting back over. There's our course heading. Roll back out. And now that we've rolled back out, that's nice. Let's go and do engage and heading. Okay, so we got that going up there. Now we're gonna go and hit the up button here. And let's go up at about 800 feet per minute. So here's autopilot down here. We're gonna go and have it go up. And there's 800 feet per minute. These flashing lights are the trim. Okay, we're up uh, beyond flaps. I've missed flaps, so flaps going up. Let's slide over here. What's gas uh, torque pressure? Torque pressure is 40. Props need to go down a little bit. And I usually do uh, for climb. Props uh, climb is 90 is what I generally do. And out we go. We're continuing to climb. So how are we doing? This is where a moving map kind of comes in a little help helpful. And it looks like we're kind of going in the right direction, right? All right, we're continuing our climb at about 800 to 1,000 feet per minute. We're climbing at about uh, 130 uh, knots. And we're just waiting to see if we're going to get a, um, if we're gonna start to pick up the San Francisco VOR here. And not a bad airplane, is it? Just a nice airplane. Okay, we're tracking 4,000 feet. Everything's looking good. Still not picking up San Francisco yet. That's all right. We shall be fine there. One way to uh, check to see how you're doing look over at a moving map. Okay, it looks like we're getting a little bit north of our line here. So we're heading up near Madeira here. Maybe we should, maybe we're picking up a little bit of wind. So, you know, until we pick up the VOR, maybe we'll go and let's go one, two, three, four, five degrees to the right. Now in an airplane like this, we don't have navigraph and a moving map that's really cool. So what he, maybe some of the other things we could have done if I wanted to do a better job of flight planning would have been to uh, pick up some other VORs and uh, go direct to a VOR that was a little bit closer. But I think we'll pick up San Francisco before long. 
Oh, we're starting to see uh, the tops of the clouds. Remember from our weather report, uh, 8,000 feet. How are we doing? We are 5,000, almost 6,000. So we should be above clouds in another 2,000 feet and get to see some nice sunshine. What is the temperature outside the airplane? Okay, there is zero degrees. Celsius is right there. So there's, t it's eight degrees. It's eight degrees Celsius. Technically, that puts us in the ice zone. see any ice on the spinner but hey it's almost you know it's getting close to fall we got to start worrying about icing soon and remember the rule about icing generally the rule is anything if you're below 10 degrees Celsius and there's there's moisture out there you're you turn on anti-ice stuff If you don't have Navigraph, there, uh, there is Volanta IU SIM Toolkit Pro. And so if you need another map to see how you're doing, you can use some, there's a free moving map here. And you can see we're a little bit, okay, so we, we're, we're a little bit off here from our straight line. So this is another way that you can go ahead and as you're learning, uh, go and figure out, eh, maybe we need to go a few more degrees to the, to the left here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do that. Passing 7,000 and change. Still got our landing lights and our nose light on. We could turn that off at 10,000 feet. See, our estimated time in route right now is about 50 minutes. So one of the things that we'll do is once we get to uh, cruise altitude, we'll cruise along a little bit in the airplane, but then I'm gonna hit pause. And then when we get to about 50 miles before top of descent, we will um, we'll restart the video so you just don't have to sit here and listen to me mindlessly chatter. We'll probably pick it up as soon as I start to pick up the San Francisco VOR. So that's, 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 that's when we'll pick up the uh, paused video there. Hmm, wait a minute. This airplane does not have a McDo. How are we going to do top of descent? Okay, well, that there's a little bit of math that you can do. So we're going to 10,000 feet. The final plunge altitude or final descent is 1,800 feet. So the math, the, 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 the rule of thumb, fast and dirty math, is 10,000 feet minus 1,800 feet times three divided by 11, divided by 1,000. We need 24.6 miles. Now, I always add about 10 miles or a little bit more to that, okay? So our top of descent, let's make it Let's make it 40 miles. How's that sound? So 40 miles is our top of descent on this one. And you heard the beep. We are now 800 feet from our top of climb. Hmm. We don't appear. We do not appear to uh, be uh, clearing the clouds. Is it getting colder? It's getting colder. Okay, so we may, we may need to go and do the prop de-icer and the air intake. I 
don't see any ice forming, but I think that safety first, let's just be ready. And we're coming up on 10,000 feet, so we could go ahead, let's, um, let's do the nose light off. So taxi light can go off. I think I'm gonna leave my landing lights on right now as we approach 10,000 feet. Just sort of, you know, cause let's, let's be a little visible here. Okay, we're also at top of climb. So our props are now gonna go down, down to cruise. So going down to cruise is, whoa, 75% now then. So what we do is we kind of look up here. Now my uh, uh, torque pressure is down a bit. That should be up to 40% or 40 inches. So I'm gonna move my torque pressure up to 40. So 40 there, 75% for my props. And we should be cruising along at about 145 to 150 knots, depending upon the wind. And you can see altitude hold has engaged. I don't say it as well as Captain Picard. And how are we doing? So let's look over here. Well, we're a little bit north of the line, but we don't appear to be going any further from the line. So that's kind of a good thing. Uh-oh, did you see that? Look out, look out the window. We've got some clear skies. We got to see a little bit of sunshine after all. Again, if you don't have Navigraph, the freebie thing to do is look at something like Volanta or Sim Toolkit Pro. And you can see we're not getting any further from the line. In fact, we may actually have turned into it just a little bit. So we may actually be about ready to cross it. Are we picking up San Francisco yet? Nope, we would see it in here that we're picking up the VOR. 115.8, hmm, I wonder if I tuned in the wrong frequency. Let's go back over here to Sky Vector. And Sky Vector, San Francisco, 115.8. All right, we're good to go on that. So we're just, uh, we're just not close enough to the VOR yet to pick it up. And this is actually pretty good. So we are cruising, we're level, we've got um, about 140 knots, how's that? So right around 40 on torque pressure, 75 on props. We seem to be cruising about as good as you cruise in something like this. Starting to see a couple of breaks in the clouds here. Oh, look at that. There's blue skies. Oh, wow. And look at that. The clouds have broken and we get to see some great Microsoft Flight Simulator scenery. So, we're cruising pretty good here. We have not picked up the San Francisco VOR yet. So, I'm gonna go and what we'll do is we'll hit pause. And as soon as I start picking up the San Francisco VOR, we'll, uh, then I'll, uh, we'll restart. And so you can just kind of cruise along and enjoy the ride, look outside. Uh, let's see, are we coming up on anything interesting here? So let's see, we're coming up on uh, Los Banos, maybe? And the San Luis Reservoir. And that's about it. Okay, so we get to go and look at some farm squares. Maybe a crop circle or something like that will show up in, uh, in just a bit. 
So keep an eye on your VOR, and uh, we'll restart the video when we pick up San Francisco's VOR. Wow, that's a noisy airplane. And we finally broke out of the clouds here as we continue to make our way to uh, San Francisco International Airport. Okay, so we're not picking up the VOR yet but we're about 20 minutes out if you take a look at this. And you can see, okay, we're at 10,000 feet. Uh, I've turned a further uh, five degrees to the left, but a couple of things I've looked at. First of all, we're starting to intercept our line over here. So I think that as we get a little bit closer, I'm gonna go and let's go and do our original course heading and that should get us direct to San Francisco since we're getting closer to that line, okay? Now, if we decided that we wanted to go and program this thing, then we would have had a line in here and we wouldn't be using Sim Toolkit Pro. So this is me just being lazy and not, and, and not setting up the Garmin yet, okay? We could have also used other VORs along the way to kind of triangulate our course and come up with a nice little course line, but this is just a basic flight in the de Havilland Twin Otter. So we can jump down that rabbit hole another time. But why haven't we gotten picked up the uh, the San Francisco VOR yet? I mean, you know, the Sim Toolkit Pro says we're 20 minutes away. The Moving Map says we're 20 minutes away. Well, here's the deal. So the VOR for San Francisco Airport is a low power VOR. It's less than 25 watts. We're not gonna pick up anything on this one. So the San Francisco VOR 115.8 is low power and they, they all have different power levels so it's sort of like okay our best laid plans were like well that doesn't make much sense so let's see uh, if we can start to pick up the ILS the ILS is 111.7 now we're going to pick this up about 20 miles out let's go and set that in here and we're going to do this here on VOR2 first so 111.7 Let's see if we're picking that up yet. Make that active. And while we're doing it, let's also go and do 111.7 on this two, and we're gonna leave that in standby. Now then, let's go down here and look at VOR2. Well, we're not picking anything up yet. So, well, we're getting kind of close, but not close enough. But we might wanna start thinking about doing our descent because we know from just basically, uh, de you know, dead reckoning time, we've been flying for a while, and uh, it's probably start time to start thinking about a descent. Nothing yet. Yep, we're not even picking up the, uh, we're not even picking up the ILS at the moment. So what should we do? Well, as we come in at uh, Seppin, and some of the, and, and Eddie, you remember some of those VOR points here? So some of these are like 6,000 feet, because we got some hills in the way, right? So I'm kind of thinking, why don't we go ahead and let's think about descent and maintain 6,000 feet. Several places to uh, dial this in. Whoops, that's a little tight. I'll go down here and let's go ahead and dial this down to 6,000 feet. So 6,000 feet. Okay, and now let's go ahead and hit the down button. Oh, I think we have to hit altitude and then down. And so we're gonna go down and let's just do a gentle descent of about 800 feet per minute. Now we're gonna pick up some speed. So generally what I'll do on this is I'm gonna roll my throttle back to about 30 to 35 over on that torque pressure so we don't pick up too much speed. And let's go ahead and just do our descent and see what happens. Uh-oh, we're back in the clouds now. The only other thing that I did while you were gone was I did turn off the landing lights while we're up in the sunshine. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on again now because we're back in the suit. And you can see my little turn uh, going back. Boy, that uh, didn't, didn't help me out much, did it? So let's go ahead and split the difference. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, one of the things is, is it might seem a little bit like, you know, we're experimenting a lot, but when you're in a new airplane and with Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is the time to experiment a little bit, have a little bit of fun and learn. 
you know, okay, well, if we turn 10 degrees this way, what's going to happen? And, you know, especially if we're flying in a situation like this where we don't have an awful lot of, um, where we don't have an awful lot of uh, navigational data like we would, say, in the Airbus or something. Okay, not an awful lot of excitement on either of those. We're going down to about 6,000, so there's 8,000. We should probably have a look at the weather in San Francisco. So let's go to our old friend, Mitar Taft. Link in the description. This is such a great place to go and figure out stuff. I've already got San Francisco. I'm going to hit reset, refresh, and see what we got. Okay, well, we're landing on 28 right. So 28 right means we're going to have about a four knot crosswind from the left blowing us to the right side of the runway. The altimeter is 2980. So we can come down and do 2980. Altimeter set, cool. <gasps> Look at this, we're picking up a VOR, how about that? We're finally picking up a VOR. It says we are 37 miles away from the airport. Uh-oh, I see hills here. What are we at, about 8,000 feet? We're going down to six. I'm going to go, um, hmm, we may have an altitude problem, and we've got clouds too. Okay, well, let's see here. What could we do at this point? Let's go to our old friend, Sky Vector. Hello, Sky Vector. And we're going to go to World VFR, and we're coming in here, and what do we have? So 4,800, 4,200, that's this big number here, basically saying, um, what's the, uh, what's the uh, lowest you can be without going splat into this, uh, in this box here? So 4248, what's up here? 4237, so 6,000 feet, according to this, we should be okay. That's the theory, but boy, those mountains are getting a little bit closer, aren't they? I'm not panicking. It's not time to panic yet. Now then, we're kind of off uh, our course here, so let's go and see. One, two, three, let's go uh, 10 degrees. And as we get closer, let's see if we can't center this up just a little bit. So here we are, there's our center line. And so there we go. I think I'm seeing the valley up ahead. So that's a good deal. We are 32 miles away from San Francisco. We're 140 knots. We're going down to 6,000 feet. Remember, we're gonna go and put our, um, uh, put our throttles back up to 40 inches torque pressure when we uh, hit our top of descent. I think the uh, VOR is actually starting to move. Oh, it's creeping over. So we're getting on our course heading. So we're kind of getting to our spot in the sky where we're supposed to be. How, how, how about that? So we'll watch this kind of creep over as we get closer, as we get to um, uh, 6,000 feet, we'll notice our airspeed's gonna go down a little bit, so we'll push the throttles forward. We are uh, not picking up the ILS yet. That's okay, usually don't pick up ILSs until about, what, 20 miles out? Another thing that we could have set here, and I think is preset on this airplane, is we have a radar altimeter. So decision height is set to 200 feet. And I think this airplane yells at you. Uh, so it, it's going to give us, um, you know, glide slope and all the other things that Airbus, that other airplanes yell at me. Okay, there's 6,000 feet. Our speed's going down. So throttles back up to about 40 inches. There we go. About 40 inches. That'll be our regular cruise. And we'll just hold 6,000 a little bit. Okay, we're slowly making our way back over to our uh, to the uh, radial the radial that we want to be on on the VOR, and let's see how this thing's looking. We're not showing up on the uh, chart here, but you see we're getting a little bit closer here. Now the uh, 
ILS, we're actually kind of right, heading right in the direction we need to be. So, the inbound course for this ILS is 284 degrees. What are we heading right now? This is 2728, that's 280. So there, let's do one, two, three, four. So this should sort of start to get us on the, uh, on the, the, the radial that we want to be on for the ILS. Let's do one, two, three, four, five. Let's do five degrees off to the right a little bit and see if we can't get a little bit closer. Are we picking up the uh, ILS yet? It doesn't say anything. Let's go ahead and flip the button and see. No, we're not picking up the ILS yet. So let's flip it back. And up, oh, there's water. We're getting kind of close. It's time to start thinking about landing. Okay, now that we're out over water, let's start thinking about getting down to that final plunge altitude. Again, on the uh, ILS chart, the uh, final uh, plunge altitude here at, uh, oh, there we are, we're even showing up there. We need to go uh, down to uh, 1,800 feet. So let's go over here and 1,800 feet. There's two, 1,800 altitude and let's go down. And I'm gonna go down at 1,000 feet per minute this time. I'm gonna pull my throttles back a little bit because we don't want to get going too fast. And down we go. Hey, we're starting to uh, get, see our VOR is moving over here too? Okay, so this is good. Are we picking up anything that resembles a glide slope? Uh, an ILS over on the other one? Not really. Let's go ahead and uh, flip it. No sign of the uh, ILS over there. Okay, this is coming over here too. How far out are we? We're 20 miles out, so now's about the time that we'd start to pick up something on 111.7. One, one, one Nothing yet. Okay. 20 miles out. Hey, look at this. We're getting pretty close here. How's our descent going? Pretty good. I think I'm gonna roll my speed back just a little bit more. So let's roll these throttles back a tad bit more. How about 25 inches? Oh, you know what? It's probably not as uh, cold out here. Well, we're a little bit below 10. I think it's time. Let's go ahead and turn off these uh, de-icing systems here. That might be a good thing to do. Hey, we're coming up here pretty quick too. Okay, there's 18 miles. So we'll turn back into uh, the runway uh, as soon as we get centered up here and check the ILS again. Coming down to 4,000 feet, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, landing lights. I think I've got them turned. Nope, they're on actually. Let's also go ahead and pre-turn on that taxi light. And everything's looking good. I think. Let's flip it again and see if we're picking up anything. <gasps> Look at that, IGWQ. Check that out on your chart. IGWQ, there's the VO, there's the ILS. So we're picking that up right now. There's our ILS, so come over here. And oh my gosh, we're off to the side. Okay, so we're on the wrong side of this. Let's get over here. We're also picking it up over here finally on VOR2. So we could go and just dial this over and have another nice indicator here. Whoops. When you move your mouse just a little bit,
Okay, we're coming down to that altitude here. And we should be at about 3,000. So we're a little low, but that's okay. A little low doesn't bug me too much. Now we're gonna keep a close eye on this thing. I think I'm gonna go and just round it up to three zero. Start getting this thing moving over. Remember, this is gonna be more sensitive than a, um, than a, um, 115.8. Let's go and put the VOR back over on NAV2. It's going to be more sensitive than a VOR station. So yeah, this now you see we're centered right up on it. But we're going to get over here on our course heading. Up oh, there it is. Moving fast. Start the turn. Okay, probably turned a little bit too soon. It's not a jet. So let's just give it a few degrees and get that thing centered up. As we look up there, we can also see that we have an airport and a runway. So we're in pretty good shape. So as long as this thing is inching over here, let's just do a little bit of a turn there. We're at the final plunge altitude of 1,800 feet. We are, do we have anything giving me a DME over here? Glide slope, track, not really. If there is, I don't see it. Let's see, does Ox, is Oxmal a, a non-directional beacon or just a, it's a waypoint in the sky, I think. So we couldn't have put a non-directional beacon in. Hmm, that's not helpful. Okay, we're slowly centering this up now. So let's go over and set that up and see how we're doing. There's our runway. So from now on, I think that we're centered up. We're pretty good. Now let's see if we can see some pappy lights or something and make this all visual. Last thing I usually like to do at this point is if we were on VATSIM, I would be tuning to ground if there was ground. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna have this map all set up for me so that I'm gonna see my taxi out. Just so that I'm uh, on the proper taxi, because that can be a problem. No sign of Pappy lights right now. So over on the other monitor, all I have in front of me over, uh, over there is a couple of flight notes and this. Everything else is turned off. It's all about visual with this plane. And I think at this point in time, it's probably time to uh, start slowing it down a little bit. So I'm gonna pull my throttles back even more and get the speed into the white arc. I'm starting to see, I think, Pappy lights, I'm not sure. Throttles back even more. Also for landing, our um, propellers go forward. So props forward all the way. You even hear the sound change a little bit there too. Okay, and that was too much. So, flaps one, and hold at the top of the white arc there at about 90. Little bit more, little bit more. Hey, I think I hear a marker beacon beeping at us. That, you know what, that's gotta be the middle marker, and that means uh, it's time to start our final plunge. So I say enough autopilot. Autopilot is off. And we're now flying the airplane. So let's start a bit of a descent. Up, oh, going a little too fast now. Throttles back to the top of the white arc. We had a little bit of a breeze blowing us off to the left there too. So we'll get back on the center line. Gently pull the throttles back. Remember when we were taxiing, I was a little rougher on the throttles. This is all about gently on the throttles now. Just a little bit here and there will keep your speed where you wanna be. And I'd rather be around 90, 95 on the approach and then touch down at about 65 knots. That was an altitude alert. We're a little off to the side. Lights are on, 
Landing gear is down. Landing gear is always down. We're still a little off to the side. Let's get back over here where we belong. There, that looks better. Well, if I thought I was seeing some pappy lights there, I don't see them now. So we'll just make it all visual. Okay, there's about 85 knots, so maybe a little more oomph. It's a big old long runway. I don't think that we have to be going super slow here. Uh, if we were going into St. Bart's right now, I think my flaps would be at 30 and I'd be super duper slow. Remember, we're also operating in an area where there's big jets. So we don't want to be going too slow. If we're in the 737 right now, I think my landing speed would be about what? 145 and we're at 80. Hey, there's some pappy lights finally showing up and it looks like we're a tad bit high but we'll catch up I'm gonna roll my throttle back just a bit how about another notch of flaps so flaps will be 20 for this landing up oh, there's one red and three white let's call it landing a little bit crabby here because of the wind Okay, keeping the speed up to a little bit above 65. This airplane will start stalling and fall like a brick. Landing outside the airplane is always hard. Landing outside is always hard. It gets a little sloppy, but that's okay. All right, let's go ahead and get over here. We're going to be exiting to the right. I'm going to go ahead and put my flaps up, and we're going to look for Taxiway Lima so that we can get out of the way. It's always fun to look outside the airplane while you're landing, but it's almost always going to result in something sloppy like that. Okay, there is Taxiway Lima. Oh, did I just pass it? I did. Okay, so we'll just cross the runways, but we should have gotten off that. So there's one nine left, one nine right, and we'll get off at Echo. Sorry. But we're not in multiplayer and we're not on VATSIM, so it's all learning, right? And there's the other runway. And then we'll look for the other runway. There's the runway we're looking, the taxiway. I was looking for a little bit of a yellow line and I didn't see one. And nice turn off the runway. And we made it. Clear the runway. Ground control says taxi via Charlie to FedEx land. So add a little bit of power. Still taxiing around big jets off the runway. Landing lights. See, we're also off the runway, so we should also do strobes. Strobe lights. And we'll add a little bit of power because we got a small little airplane, long way to go. And we are coming up on uniform. Did a little bit of a dissolve there because it was kind of a long, boring taxi. And uh, looking for uniform, that's going to be our next available right, which takes us up to FedEx land. So do we have a uniform there? It looks like a uniform to me. Either that or it's a very, very... Uh, 
economical uh, wine cup. All right, gentle turn up here on uniform. Next after that, we're looking for Zulu to get us into FedEx land. FedEx is really uh, trying to come up here is uh, kind of a long way off the beaten path here in uh, San Francisco. So you can see we're up here and we're gonna make a hard right here at Zulu. There's our hard right at Zulu. And then right up here, so directly ahead, that is the US Coast Guard. So Coast Guard is directly ahead and we're gonna continue around Zulu. And then we're gonna be passing one of United's big hangars. And so this is a big United base of operations here. And then we're gonna look over here and then we continue on Zulu. And then FedEx is way up here. So they have to go pretty quickly if they're if if we're gonna get the uh, if we're gonna get our uh, FedEx there stuff there overnight. And the FedEx building is this thing right up here. A little bit off the line here. And I think what they do is they put the really, really big FedEx airplanes out here. And then the little, the little uh, uh, feeder planes come in over here. So we come in and do the feeder stuff over here. Whoa, very big bumps. Good thing we're about ready to run out of uh, taxi space and there's water, so. So all the way down here. Actually, this looks like parking for a pretty big jet. I'm not sure this would be where the little feeder things are gonna go. But we'll just put ourselves right in there and a gentle stop. Come on down here, look down here, grab the uh, parking brakes. So parking brakes are next. Now props all the way down. So props gonna go down. While that's going off, we're gonna do the generators off. We're gonna do the bleed air and this temperature off. Okay, so we got those. We're also gonna turn off the pitot tube heater and the taxi light. Okay, and look over here, props are down. So now we're going to feather them. So now we hit the feather buttons and you have to click those. So feather, and you can see the prop RPMs going way down. When those go and stop themselves at the bottom of the uh, prop, and I think that's about 10% of prop RPM. At that point in time, we go and do fuel and fuel. As we go ahead and do that, we can come down here and we'll stop squawking. Should have probably stopped squawking a little bit earlier. And there goes, the props are all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead and do the anti-collision light. Fasten seat belts can go off. And so those are good. And the props have stopped, so that's a good thing. So now we'll also go ahead and do no smoking and position lights. And we're, uh, we're on the battery now, so unless we wanna plug into ground power, we're gonna go and do off and off. And our airplane is safety, we're ready to go. They're going to unload the very, very big Dr. No secret cargo. Who knows what could be there? And we made it.
Nobody was hurt, nobody was arrested. So what could I have done a little differently here? There was obviously a little bit of exp uh, experimentation going on. Better planning on my part really would have been to realize that the VOR that we were going into here at San Francisco really was uh, a low power VOR and to count on that way out there there's mistake number one. I could have also gone and done a better job maybe of using the Garmin in here too. I could have along the way, instead of just counting on uh, the uh, San Francisco VOR to be there for me, I could have also used a few others. So we could have used uh, the uh, Panoche, I hope that's right, uh, VOR, we could have gone to the Panoche VOR, we could have gone and done uh, El, Nin El, El Nido. So we could have gone to El Nido. Uh, we've got another VOR down here. So we could have hopscotched VORs, picked up the San Jose VOR and just used those. And that way we could have kind of hopscotched our way. That might have made a little bit of a difference too. But by and large, it was a decent flight. How about the landing rate? The landing rate was a minus 121, I think, you know, outside the airplane when you can't watch, I'm gonna call that a fairly decent landing rate. And there is a, uh, a little cargo hop in the, uh, in the um, uh, Aerosoft uh, Twin Otter. There are a whole bunch of different versions of this. You can do some passenger ops with it. Uh, I think that these come with floats. So you can go and take this airplane and do, um, you know, take off from uh, a hard uh, asphalt airport and go land on the water. Some of the most amazing places to fly on the water uh, with the Twin Otter is going to be the uh, islands uh, off the uh, coast in British Columbia. That is really amazingly uh, uh just amazing scenery there and canada is going to be the next scenery update so that would be a really good thing to do too and there you go um my flight notes today we'll put a few of the flight notes in chat uh as always as i like to say uh about the uh, flights that i do here on youtube it really is not about the right way or the versus the wrong way this is just how to get you up in the air and back down on the ground again, and you can jump down as many rabbit holes as you want after you have the success of being able to take off and land. So an awful lot of what I do is these are just the things that work for me. Uh, I'm still new here on YouTube, so please leave questions and comments. I read them all and uh, even get around to responding to uh, pretty much all of them too. If you liked what you saw, like a few people do, I'll say a big thank you to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the jet fuel in my flight plan for sure. And also the incredible um, uh, subscribers and uh, gift sub givers over on Twitch. We do fly over on the Twitch uh, uh, video platform uh, six days a week. Tuesday through Sunday, our departure time is 1900 Zulu. During the summertime hours, that is 3 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. And thank you so much for flying with me. I will see you soon on uh, Twitch and soon here on YouTube. As always, I like to say stay healthy, stay safe, and happy flying.